Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barn at Looking Point. We help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today, we're going to be taking a Cisco video endpoint, a Google meeting, and a Jamboard, bringing them all together, see how it works, leveraging Pexip. And this is the Tech Talk. All right, we're back and we're going to be taking a Cisco video endpoint, bringing it into a Google meeting, and just for the heck of it, bringing in a Jamboard to see how that collaboration experience works. Before we jump into actually creating the meeting and show you what that experience is like, let's talk a little bit about the Pexip integration. So in order to integrate Pexip with Google Meetings, you're going to get an email from Pexip that's going to say, hey, have your systems administrator go into Google and generate a code. You're going to generate that code from Google, and you're going to head over to Pexip and paste that code in. Then you're going to get another email from Pexip saying, hey, congratulations, we've got the integration set up. Now there's a few more settings you need to do within Google to complete the setup. So you're going to go into Meetings, and you're going to paste in a DNS URL and a PIN code. Hit Save there. So once integrated, when you set up a meeting, it's going to automatically add the SIP URI into those meetings. So whether you're doing an ad hoc one, just like create a meeting, or you're going into Calendar and scheduling those meetings, it's going to do that for you natively. So now that we've talked a little bit about the PECSIP integration, let's talk about the details of when you send out those meetings, how do you see those SIP URIs? Before we get into our meeting, let's just flip over to our G Suite and talk about the two ways to create a meeting. So the first way is to click Start a Meeting. That's for your ad hoc uh, style meeting. You just click that, and it's going to create the meeting for you. The other way is to flip over to the calendar and create a calendar item. When you create a calendar item, it's going to say, hey, do you want to add a Google Meeting uh, video conference? So I'm going to click Add there. Now you'll notice it just pops it in, and I could do all the other things and hit Save, invite participants, and we're good to go. Um, the one thing I want to talk about is the other ways to join. So I'm just going to click Start a Meeting, and it's going to go ahead, turn on my camera. I'm going to go ahead and mute my audio just in case. There are more numbers and room options up here at the top. There's also Join and use a phone for audio. So that's if I want to use my computer for the video, but I want to use the audio through uh, PSTN. So I'm going to click more numbers and room options. And when I do that, it's going to take me to this page that says dial-in numbers, which would be for PSTN dial-in numbers. The other is third-party systems. So third-party systems is the SIP URI at the bottom. You can see where our PECSIP integration is has created the SIP URI. That's the SIP URI we're going to dial from the Cisco video endpoint. So when we walk into the room, we're going to type in this code at gmeet.pexip.me. And so that's going to take us into the Google meeting. The other third-party systems here, that this other number is for Jamboards, things like that. You could dial in that code, and you could connect in as well. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead, go back to Gmail, and uh, I'm just going to click Start a Meeting. It's going to pop it up here, mute my audio. Let me make sure I don't have two open. I don't. Uh, and I'm just going to click Join Now. Once I'm joined in, it's going to say, hey, do you want to add others to this meeting? This is just standard Google stuff. I'm going to add a person. I'm going to add myself. Um, add them. Send an email to invite. Now I'm in the meeting. I can see the participants. It's just myself in the room. You can see that my mic is, is muted. Now that I'm joined in from my PC, let's go join in from the Cisco Video Endpoint, and let's also join in from the Jamboard so you can see what that experience is like from all three systems. Let's go. Okay, I've got the Google Meeting set up. Now, for our setup, we've got a Cisco Video Room system. We've also got the Jamboard, and we've got my computer right here. Now, in order to get capture what the experience would be like in each of the rooms, I set up a camera facing the video system. So in the case of the Jamboard, I've got a camera facing the Jamboard. I've also got a camera in the conference room facing the conference room. And what I did is I created the meeting on my laptop. And so I went into Google. I created it, started a meeting, and I joined immediately from my laptop. Then I went to the Cisco Video System. I went to the Touch 10, and I dialed in the SIP URI for the PECSIP bridge, which brings us into the Google Meeting. So I dialed that. It then prompts my PC to admit that device or the untrusted trunk 
into the meeting. So I went to my laptop, I then said approve, and then that meeting room was brought into the meeting. Then I went to the Jamboard and I clicked in the top right hand corner to say join or add a meeting. I typed in the meeting code and joined into the meeting. So then I had three participants in this meeting. I had the PC, I had the video endpoint, and I've also had the Jamboard. Now to test out some of the functionality, like if we did this in the real world and maybe I brought a Jamboard in and we wanted to brainstorm ideas, you could go to the Jamboard and share your screen and then start drawing. So on the Jamboard, what I did is once I joined into the meeting, I made sure all the video was working, I could see the participants, then I went ahead and started to draw and do some things that you would do if you were collaborating in a meeting. One of the things that I noticed is when I shared my screen, the, the whiteboard essentially, it cut off the video signal. Now, that could be because the camera angle, the way it's angled or positioned, it would really just be the top of my head, so it really wouldn't be that useful for a participant that's watching. It may be just more of a distraction, so maybe that's why Google disabled that feature. So if I share the whiteboard capability in the meeting, it just turns off the camera. And then if I stop sharing the content, the camera will then turn back on and it can capture the person or the people sitting in the room. One of the other things that I noticed is when I shared my screen or shared the whiteboard presentation on the dual screen video unit of the Cisco system, it showed on both screens just like it was receiving content. On the left hand screen, you'll notice that the image was cropped, cropped down um, because it's showing the other participants at the bottom. And then on the right hand screen, it's showing the full image of the content. So that tells me that Google is sharing in both channels. Maybe what it's doing is, is sharing the whiteboard image in the video stream and also sharing the whiteboard image in the content stream. And that's how it, it displays it on both screens. Now on my machine, I just saw the whiteboard uh, from that participant's view. Um, another thing that I noticed is on the Jamboard, if I touched the video image it, at the end there, it, it maximized the video to really give you that immersive video experience as opposed to it being shrunken and, and small on the right hand side. I didn't play around with video switching that much because it's just me. I would have to go make noise in each of the rooms, but essentially what it's gonna do is switch to the active speaker. So the active speaker is gonna be the prominent displayed person. There's other features that you can do to change the video layout. I didn't really get into that because it's not really a tutorial on how to use Google Meetings, but more of just how you can bring in Cisco video endpoints, a Jamboard, and PCs together through Google, just so you get the most out of your equipment. So if you've got rooms and conference rooms in an office somewhere, you've spent a lot of money on that hardware and infrastructure, you wanna be able to leverage it, regardless of platform. And Pexip really enables you to do that. So if you've got, whether it's Google, Microsoft Teams, being able to leverage that Cisco video infrastructure investment to pull those into those rooms is really critical, I think, in today's day and age where we don't want to we don't want to replace a bunch of video equipment in our in our conference rooms if we don't have to. If I said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'd love to know more about that. Maybe if you could do a video on this, leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.